welcome to McNulty's Book Corral. Today we're taking another trip. This time we're going to Edinburgh, Scotland, one of the most magical places I've ever had the privilege of visiting. I love Scotland and I certainly loved Edinburgh. I think it's my favorite city of all the cities I've been to and I've been to some pretty fascinating places in my life, both here in the United States, uh, in England and in down in Mexico. Mexico City, for example, is a really fascinating place to visit. Uh, as well as the desert with the Pyramid of the Sun and the Moon. Um, but Edinburgh is special. So I put together this little short little video um, that I made about Edinburgh. Some books to recommend. First, The Lonely Planet Pocket Edinburgh. You'll see represented on the cover of this book, Colton Hill, which is represented in the video, Magical Place to Visit. And Scottish Miscellany by Jonathan Green, which is a book that gives you insight into the places, habits, and customs of uh, the Scottish people. I found it incredibly uh, helpful to read this before leaving for Scotland. So Scottish Miscellany by Jonathan Green is a great book. And if you're quite ready, let's take a look at a little trip that I took to Edinburgh, Scotland. With the Rutland Hotel as our base of operations, we were free to explore the Prince Street Gardens and Edinburgh Castle. The Rutland Hotel is across from St. John's Church and next to the historic Caledonian Hotel on Shandwick Place, facing Edinburgh Castle. The Prince Street Gardens are magical, and it was here that I found the Ross Fountain, which had been installed in 1872. We strode purposefully to Edinburgh Castle on a windswept and rainy day, and with a hard, cold wind tugging at our coats, we explored the battlements. The view is magnificent, and there is much to see here for those of you who might one day make the trip. Our explorations became intricate, jam-packed, long days, all of which resulted in over 5,000 photographs only a fraction of which is seen here. Hear the wind off the Firth of Forth, carrying with it tales of pirates and scoundrels and adventurers from the far corners of the world. Across the city, we made a point of ascending Calton Hill, climbed the tower and reveled in the sun-spangled warmth with the seacoast nearby, touched by a sailor's breeze. The view of the city from both Edinburgh Castle and Calton Hill are incredible and a point of venture that shouldn't be overlooked by any intrepid traveler. The wind is laced with the soft scent of the sea which is visible as a patch of blue down the long cobbled fairway. Coming out of the castle, we explored High Street and the Royal Mile where the Writers Museum and Deacon Brodie's Tavern held us spellbound. The nearby St. Giles Cathedral was crowded with visitors. There is a statue of John Knox nearby, a leader of the Scottish Reformation, but it's the statue of David Hume, a Scottish philosopher who demands attention. His toe, which is accessible to passers-by willing to reach upward, has become the focus of thousands of tourists who touch his marble appendage. I found Edinburgh vibrant, possessed of a wild and creative spirit, its ancient history and idyllic countryside, the perfect salve for my wounded soul. Edinburgh at night is electric with energy, romantic and mysterious. There are side streets and shadowy avenues well worth your exploration. And at last a pint, or two, and some Scots whiskey to warm us against the approaching icy touch of autumn. Let us depart here at the Gilly Doo, where I found two fellows named Chris and Adam playing an old song by faces and doing such a fine job. I salute them again with a pint in hand as we say goodbye to Edinburgh. And may your journey be equally as satisfying.
Just as to sleep, just tweaking with the stars. 